what's up guys how is everyone doing i am so excited about this topic today um there's a lot of things that i like talking about when it comes to health and wellness and carbs is definitely one of them carbs is uh carbs having a moment right now but not, not such a great moment um there's a lot of carb phobia going on right now with people and people are terrified of eating carbs um, and the reason why is because there's a lot of low carb diets out there right now that have just been made really, really popular and people are just, you know, not adding carbs anymore to their plate. So I really want to talk about the importance of carbs for weight loss, how to choose the right ones and which ones are essential to really accelerate your fat burning. So if you guys are new here, Hi, my name is Trudy Stone. I am a certified culinary nutrition expert. I'm also the author of the new book, Unbreakable. And I should have a book to show you guys. And I have no idea where my books are. I have my husband's book here, but I don't have mine. That's funny. <laughs> uh, but you guys can jump on Amazon if you want to check out that book. It's the seven uh, essential habits that I use myself to lose weight, 30 pounds, and keep it off for five years. So um, if you want to grab that book, head over to Amazon. You can grab that. Um, so let's get into tonight's topic, guys. And if you're watching this on YouTube, because sometimes I do tend to post these later on YouTube, feel free to go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss any of my videos. And also leave a comment below at the end of the video and let me know what you enjoyed the most or if you have any questions about the topic. So guys, even though you may not think so, there are a lot of like anti-carb evangelists out there just telling you that carbs are not good for you. You shouldn't be eating carbs. Carbs are bad. Carbs are evil. But I'm sorry to tell you that you have been duped because carbs are so important to weight loss. And I'm going to break down all of the reasons why. And I'm hoping you're going to stay awake in the process. Um, but before I tell you the reasons why they're essential to weight loss, I wanted to share with you why some people tell you to cut out carbs. And the main reason why is that a lot of people tend to overeat carbs. Hey, Marcia, what's going on? Um, so a lot of people tend to overeat carbs. And the reason why is because carbs, they make us feel good. Carbs are comfort food. Carbs are the food that we turn to when we have a breakup. Carbs are food that we turn to when we're watching Grey's Anatomy on a Thursday night. Carbs are what we turn to when, you know, we've had a bad day at work. So carbs just make us feel good. They're the ultimate comfort food. And it's also the food that, you know, or the macronutrient, I should say, that a lot of people tend to overeat. So that's, a, you know, another reason why people tell you to kind of cut out carbs. And there's a whole bunch of stuff about spiking your blood sugar that I'm going to get to later. So don't worry about that. Um... So guys, you know, there's about a three to one ratio of water to grams of carbohydrates. So when you cut back on carbohydrates to lose weight, a lot of times you're losing water weight. And I'm sure you've heard of that before. You lose water weight. And then when you introduce carbohydrates back in, that weight comes back on really, really quickly. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of cutting out entire food groups. Um, it's definitely a reason why I'm not a fan of cutting out carbs either. And again, I'm going to share more reasons why throughout this broadcast, why I'm not a fan of cutting out carbs whatsoever. Um, so instead of completely banishing carbs to lose weight, why not use them as the potential fat busters that they actually are? So I credit carbs with helping me to lose, and not just carbs itself, but I do credit carbs with helping me to lose 30 pounds. And when people are trying to lose weight, there's three things that they focus on. They focus on protein, they focus on fat, and they focus on carbohydrates. And with protein, people are like, oh, protein, 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 they gotta get more protein, gotta get more protein. And in fact, people are eat actually eating more protein than they actually need to be eating. With fats, with people losing weight, I find a lot of people aren't eating enough, enough healthy fats. And healthy fats are really important because not only do they provide energy to your body, they also really help with managing cravings as well. Um, so that's why fats are also important. And the thing with carbs is that both carbs and fat, again, they both provide energy for your body. And that's really important when you're trying to lose weight as well, because the last thing you want to feel when you're trying to lose weight is tired, lethargic, and hangry. Okay. Not even hungry, but hangry. How many of you have been hangry on weight loss diets? I know I've been there holding on to a carrot stick all day long for dear life. Maybe I just dip it into like one like little fingernail size of hummus and then, you know, you call it a day. But 
yeah, so stop doing that. Stop starving yourself. I'm going to get into that more later as well. There's so many things I want to talk about with this topic. It's so juicy. Um, so the reason why I'm not a fan, and this is the major reason why I'm not a fan of cutting out carbohydrates altogether, is because they contain fiber, okay? And fiber, I cannot stress this enough, fiber is so key to your diet when you are trying to lose weight. And the reason why, there's a couple of reasons why, but the major reason why is that carbs help you to feel full for a longer period of time. So that prevents overeating, right? Um, so it just makes it a lot easier for you to stick to a weight loss plan when you're eating foods that are high in fiber. Um, the a second reason as well is that fiber really helps to stabilize your blood sugar as well. So when you eat a lot of foods that tend to spike your blood sugar level, you inevitably, you inevitably crash, right? So a couple things with that. When you have that crash, you tend to just eat something else to pick you back up again. So it's kind of like this vicious cycle that you're in when, you're, when your blood sugar gets spiked. And the other thing is when you're constantly on this roller coaster ride of your blood sugar going up, blood sugar going down, up, down, up, down, it leads to increased cortisol levels in your body. And when you have those elevated cortisol levels in your body for extended periods of time, that leads to belly fat, okay? And I know, ladies, you want to avoid the belly fat. And managing your blood sugar levels is key in helping you to burn the belly fat. And foods that are high with fiber help you to do this. I know because I've been there. It happened to me. It happened with my clients as well. When I started adding more high fiber foods into their meal plans, they were shocked to learn the difference that they felt and how much easier it was for them to actually lose weight and control those cravings. So a lot of people are not getting enough fiber in their diet. I think the average American eats about 15 grams of fiber a day when really you should be at about 25 grams of fiber per day, right? Um, and I know, and I don't want to bash the keto diet here, okay, because I do like a lot of things about the keto diet. I know a lot of people personally who are losing a lot of weight on the keto diet. There's a couple of issues that I have with it, and this is not going to be a keto banning or, you know, bashing session. So don't worry about that. But the two, maybe there's more than two reasons why I'm not a fan of the keto diet. But one of the reasons why is that I feel like it's not a sustainable diet. I feel like Keto is another one of those diets that people hop on that bandwagon and they might have success with losing weight because a lot of people do, but is it sustainable? Is that a lifestyle that you can see yourself living each and every day, day in and day out, being so restrictive? So that's the, the main problem I have with the keto diet. Um, the second problem that I have with it is that you're not getting enough foods that are high in fiber. And again, the fiber is so key to helping you to feel full and to prevent you from overeating. Um, fiber is also really good for keeping you regular. Let's keep it real. And it's important to stay regular so that you're eliminating those toxins from your body. Because when you're eliminating those toxins from your body, you're also, your body's also releasing that weight as well. So fiber is so important for so many different reasons when you're trying to lose weight. Um, so I don't really want to get stuck on all the wrong carbohydrates, but I do want to talk about the ones that you should avoid, okay? So you really want to avoid the refined carbohydrates. So the refined carbohydrates are the ones that are spiking your blood sugar, are the ones that are contributing to belly fat, are the ones that are preventing you from losing weight and that are just keeping you at this weight loss plateau where you're not losing any weight. So the refined carbohydrates are foods like white flour, pasta, pizza, uh, you know, white bread, those sorts of things. So don't hate me if I've just named some of your favorite foods there. I'm doing this to help you, all right? So again, those are fine carbohydrates. All of those foods, when they're processed, so when these manufacturers process the white bread, when they put, you know, process the flour and all of those things, they essentially are stripping all of the nutrients from those foods that your body needs not only to be healthy, but also to lose weight, right? So you're missing the bran and you're also missing uh, the germ as well when you're processing a lot of those carbs. So again, the white bread, um, the flours, the, the pasta and all of those sort of things. 
And you're also missing B vitamins and you're missing vitamin E as well. Um, and I feel like ladies, it's really important for you to get vitamin E because vitamin E is really important for healthy hair, skin, nails, all that stuff. And B vitamins are really important to helping you to manage stress as well. So B vitamins are crucial for that. So when you're eating those refined carbohydrates, you're missing a lot of those nutrients that are helping you to keep you healthy, but are also helping you to lose weight. So try to minimize those as much as you can. I'm not going to say completely cut it out because sometimes that's impossible. And I will admit myself, I do have my pizza once a week. I like my Domino's. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> So I'm not a fan of cutting out completely like entire food groups. Okay. So, so you can still have some of that in there, but you just want to minimize it. Um, I also want to talk about, um, so let's talk about some whole grains that you can eat. So some whole grains that you can eat, cause I talked about refined carbohydrates that are really processed and on the other end of that is whole grains. So you want to eat foods like brown rice, you want to eat wild rice. I love wild rice because I feel like it's just a little bit different than brown rice. I find it has a little bit more flavor, it's a little bit more interesting, and it goes amazing with salmon. I love salmon and wild rice. Salmon, wild rice, and veggies, like that's, that's my thing. And I know I'm going off on a tangent here, but if I do do veggies, if I do like, um, let's say like a broccoli or if I do a spinach or if I do a bok choy, I love bok choy, so good. What I'll do is I'll just like in a, in a pan or whatever, I'll get some olive oil. I'll get a little bit of sesame oil going on in there. Sometimes some ginger. Those three things right there give you so much flavor. So good. So again, I'm so passionate about healthy foods that have a lot of flavor. So anyways, I went off on a tangent there, but just wanted to give you some ideas. And broccoli is also a really great food that's high in fiber, also high in vitamin C, which is really going to help with keeping your immune system strong as well. Um, you can also eat some more low carb vegetables like uh, spinach. You can eat kale. You can eat cauliflower. Cauliflower is an amazing one. Um, so many benefits to cauliflower, so many things you can do with cauliflower these days. I find that people are being really creative with the cauliflower. Um, I like doing like stews with it, soups with it, that sort of thing. Um, really great for that. Roasting it. I love roasting cauliflower along with some other veggies like um, red peppers. I like to roast it with maybe some Brussels sprouts. Um, and again, just add some seasoning to that and I just throw that into my salad. So I just try to make it really easy. And flavorful that's the name of the game for me when it when it comes to eating healthy easy and flavorful um, so I also want to talk about uh, so let's talk about whole grains and belly fat so there was a, a study that came out it was with the American 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 Journal of Clinical Nutrition they did a study showing that uh, people who have or eat a lot of whole grains had lower instances of belly fat and even specifically visceral fat so visceral fat is that fat around your stomach that if you, if you're carrying that around for too long, it poses health risks because it can lead to more serious things down the road, like diabetes. It can lead to things like, um, you know, heart disease, obesity, all of those things. Um, so I don't like when people say to completely eliminate whole grains. And that's another thing as well on the keto diet. Like I do like my whole grains. I like my lentils as well. Uh, lentils and beans, they also have a lot of fiber. They're also known as complex carbohydrates. So they're going to give you the energy. They're going to give you the fiber. You're going to get omega threes, which is great for brain health, great for energy. Um, I find that lentils and beans just have so many different nutrients that are crucial to weight loss. And those are the two foods that weren't even on my radar. Like I would say even six years ago. But once I discovered them and started adding them to my weight loss plan, that's when the weight really started to come off. Um, because when I ate those foods, again, it helped me to feel full. So it prevented a lot of overeating and it prevented and minimized a lot of eating and just mindless snacking in between meals. If you want recipes with like beans and lentils, just go to my website, search lentils, and there's like quite a few there for you to choose from. And, and, I, and a lot of people are intimidated by lentils. Like people will write to me or send me comments and be like, I don't know how to make lentils. What do I do? Like, how do I cook them? 
they're so easy to cook. Like I am telling you, like it's not as hard as you think. They're quite easy to cook. And if you're looking for some inspiration, again, just go to my website, search lentils, and there's some really quick, easy, flavorful, again, easy and flavorful recipes for you on the blog that you guys can check out. Um, so guys, if you really want to learn how to eat carbs in the right way, I want to talk just real briefly about my program, Metabolism on Fire. It's a 21 day breakthrough weight loss program that really helps you to lose weight in a healthier way without feeling hangry and without feeling deprived. Um, and again, these are a lot of the same foods, recipes, tips, strategies that I've used on myself to lose 30 pounds and that I've also recommended to my clients to help them to lose weight as well. So if you want to lose weight without feeling deprived, without feeling hungry, without feeling like you have to cut so many foods out of your diet, you definitely want to check out um, that program, Metabolism on Fire. And I'll place a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. Um, and in that plan, you're going to enjoy a lot of natural carbohydrates that's really going to help to speed up your metabolism. And the reason why it's called Metabolism on Fire and why I'm so passionate about metabolism and weight loss as well is because when a lot of my clients come to me, they have been dieting for years and dieting unsuccessfully for years. They may see some success with losing a few pounds here and there, but then the weight just comes right back. And the problem is when you're doing a lot of this yo-yo dieting, like losing it, putting it back on, losing it and putting it back on, it throws your metabolism out of whack and it slows down your metabolism. So I'm going to have actually a, a three day, I think it's like a three or four day jumpstart series. It's going to come out maybe next week where I talk a little bit more about that. Um, but essentially all of that yo-yo dieting and a lot of the low fat diets specifically completely tanks your metabolism. So the metabolism program, um, metabolism on fire program is all about resetting your metabolism. It's all about helping you to, um, you know, reduce stress in your body as well. I talk a lot about the nutrients and foods that help your body to, re you know, release stress. Um, these foods are proven to help you release stress. And there's a lot of a uh, mindset stuff, um, in that program as well. And again, this is all based on, you know, clients that I've had as well that have come to me and they have a lot of um, emotional and mental barriers that they need to break when it comes to losing weight. Things that they've carried with themselves, you know, from childhood into adulthood um, in terms of how they perceive themselves and how they perceive their bodies. And these things are actually causing them to overeat. So I thought that was really important because I, so many of my clients that come to me have these issues. I thought it was really important for me to include that um, in the weight loss program as well. And there's no other weight loss programs that I know of that really delve into that. And I find that's the foundation of weight loss because when you can identify those emotional roadblocks and those emotional barriers that are causing you to overeat in the first place, once you identify what those are and once you correct them, that's your foundation right there. And when you lose the weight, it's going to be easier for you to keep it off because now you've identified and you've slayed all of those emotional barriers. And that also comes from my personal experience as well with being overweight, you know, as a child and throughout my teens. And then I went away to college and gained a whole bunch of weight. And I had a lot of emotional issues when it came to that. Um, I wasn't very kind to myself. I didn't say, you know, the nicest things to myself. I didn't treat myself in the nicest way. Um, so it also comes from that as well and having that experience and, and wanting to help women through that. Um, so back to carbs for a second, kind of veered off a little bit there. Let's talk about fruits real quick, because fruits is also another thing that people uh, tend to stay away from because fruits are high in sugar. So people are like, no, I can't eat any fruits when I'm trying to lose weight. Yes, you can eat fruits, but there's some ones that you can choose that are going to be more beneficial to helping you to lose weight. So the top three that I like to recommend in terms of fruits that not only will help with weight loss, but are high in fiber as well are apples, pears, and berries. And all of these three fruits, not only are they high in fiber, they're really gonna help, again, to keep that blood sugar um, stable. And when you're trying to lose weight, keeping your blood sugar levels stable is really important because it's gonna help to prevent weight gain. And it's gonna help to eliminate belly fat as well. 
So again, that's apples, pears, and berries. And there's lots of ways that you can incorporate them into your diet rather than just... And I have this thing, okay? I feel like... Because Wendy Williams always does this. She always goes off on a tangent. So I have this thing about apples. I, I can't pick up an apple and just bite into it. Like, I can't be like... And just bite into an apple. And I know it sounds crazy. I don't know. I just can't... I can't... I, who's with me? Let me know in the comments. I just can't do it. Like, I have to cut it up. I know. It seems a bit childish. But I gotta cut it up or something on wedges or... I gotta drop it in a smoothie. I can't just bite into an apple. It's just, it's hard for me. Anywho, what you can do is with apples, you can throw them into a smoothie. So if I find myself hungry in between meals, what I'll do is I'll whip up a really quick, easy smoothie. So the first thing I add is greens. So some type of greens like a kale or a spinach. And then I'll add either apples or pears to it. Um, and then sometimes I'll add a little bit of ground flax. Because again, that's high in fiber and that's high in omega-3s as well. So those healthy fats are going to help to prevent, you know, food cravings. And I'll add some coconut water to it. You can add regular water, you can add coconut water, or you can do like a half and half of like maybe a half cup orange juice, half cup water. And that's it really. And that's going to make you feel full and that's guaranteed going to keep you full until the next meal. So that's a little hack that you can try. Um... Another carb that's a, another hot topic is starchy vegetables. And there's a lot of talk about staying away from potatoes and man, the potato has been villainized like my man Littlefinger on Game of Thrones. Who are my Game of Thrones fans out there? <laughs> uh, but yeah, potatoes have been villainized. But again, my whole thing is about eating things in moderation. So I'm not going to tell you to stop eating the potato. But what I will say is, you just might want to minimize it. That's all. So you don't want to eat potatoes every single day. Maybe it's a couple times a week sort of thing, right? So again, there's ways that you can get around it. Um, Because I feel like if you completely cut things out of your diet, when you do see that food again, you're going to completely OD on that food because you feel like you missed out on eating it. So now you got to just hoard it and you got to get all of it in. So not a fan of completely cutting out food groups. Um, so starchy vegetables... Again, they have fiber, so that's important. So we can eat sweet potatoes. That's also a really great one. Fiber, and again, that beta carotene that we talked about, that's also really helpful with helping you to manage stress. Um, yeah, so don't completely eliminate starchy vegetables either. Still have some of those in your diet. Um, so guys, that's essentially it, what I have for you in terms of carbs and why carbs are important for weight loss. And really bottom line carbs, I feel are important to weight loss because they provide your body with energy and they also contain fiber, which again is really important to helping you to lose weight and helping you to burn fat. So if you want more information on metabolism on fire, again, I'll place the link in the description below so you can check that out. Um, but in metabolism on fire, you're going to learn how to make meals every day with those natural carbohydrates that are going to give your body the nutrients and the energy that you need and it's going to help you to burn fat and accelerate that metabolism. Again, because a lot of women, their metabolism is slowed down due to the yo-yo diets, the low-fat diets, age, you know, lots of different factors. So resetting your metabolism is the best way to get your metabolism revved up and to really start to accelerate your weight loss. So again, I'll place a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. Um, so guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been so fun to talk to you guys about carbs, one of my favorite hot button topics. And I hope to see you. I'm not sure I'll be here next Wednesday because I do have a meeting that is unavoidable. So I'm not sure if it's gonna be on a Wednesday night. I might have to move it to a Tuesday or a Thursday but I will try to connect with you guys live somehow. If you do have any questions, please leave me a comment below. Let me know. I'm always happy to answer questions. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my videos. And also comment below. Let me know what you like most about this video. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, carbs are not the enemy and carbs are not evil. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.